Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you how we work with the auto network state machine of Pernet. Now it's actually very easy to work with and it's extremely useful. I personally use it for any game that I that it makes sense for. And I would say some of the games that it makes sense for are, well, state-driven games, right? So like Counter-Strike and shooter games that might need a buying phase and a warm-up phase and a round running phase and so on, where you want to move essentially between phases. This could also be board games, strategy games, so on. Really, 9 out of 10 games need some kind of state handling. And this network state machine will automatically handle the networking of that for you. So first of all, let me just show you how we get started with this. So I'm going to make a state machine game object. And let me just reset where it's placed, just because that's how I like it. And I'm going to add the state machine script to it. Which is the one with the green little dot here, which is from Pernet. Now this holds a list of states and also holds some debug information when you run it. So I guess first of all, let's get started by just making some states. Now I've made this little states folder in my scripts folder. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but I just like to organize it. And I'm just going to make a script that I call state one. And now let me remove the default code in here from state one. And let's make state one into a state node. Now notice how there's two different types of state nodes. There's a normal state node and there's a generic state node. Now the normal state node is what we'll be using first. And the generic state node is essentially if you want to pass data to the new state. <coughs> But in our case, let's just start without the data. So I'm just going to make the state node, and this requires you to be using pernet.state machine. Now, the state node inherits directly from network behavior itself. So you can use anything that you normally would over a network. For example, you can use server RPCs or whatever that you'd like to use. Now, there's some things that you can override in the state node. That's essentially three things. You can override the enter, you can override the state update, and you can override the exit. <clears throat> and they look like this and essentially these run um, well enter runs when we enter the state and exit runs when we leave the state I think that makes pretty good sense and the state update runs one when the state is the active state this will essentially be your update method so you know similar to how update works normally this will just only update when it's this active state which is very useful for example if we want to only handle certain input or whatnot during this state so now let's try in the enter state and debug.logout and let's just say entered state one. <clears throat> and on exit, we'll just say exited state one. And now on state update, let me just do so that it's an input that actually changes our state. So I can just do in, if input dot get key down and I can do key code dot X, for example. And here we just want to do machine dot next. Now machine refers directly to the state machine of our project. So the state machine that we put in here. Now, this state machine will be, of course, different depending on uh, what the state is placed on. So you can have multiple state machines and they will always reference the state machine that is relevant to them. So if we just first of all, I'll explain this in a little bit as well, but let's just first of all set up state one. So I'm just going to make a child game object. This really doesn't matter. The state one script can be anywhere you want. They can also be on the state machine. I just like organizing it with an object per state because that just makes it nice and organized. And then I'm going to add state one to our list of states. Now, going back to our script, let me just explain a little bit more about this machine.next. So as I mentioned, the machine is the state machine reference directly that references to this current state instance of the state. But you can also do machine.previous, which will move to the previous state. And obviously machine.next will move to the next state. And you can also do machine.setState, which will set a specific state, which means you can set up a reference. So you can do a public state node, and we could do, for example, next state. And then we could with set state set it that we want to go directly to this state. So next will essentially move to the next one in the list order. Previous will move to the previous one in the list order. And set state will move to any state that is within the list order. So you can essentially use these very easily. Now for the most part, you might want to use next in order to sequentially move through your states. But I will say that the set state can be very useful in a lot of cases where you might want to jump to certain states. For example, maybe you have a game starting state and a game ending phase state and you don't want to reach those before you know essentially the game starting phase you only start within but then maybe you have a round starting phase a round running phase and a round ending phase and you might want to loop between them so you could go into the round starting phase then you can next into the round running then you can next into the round ending phase and then you can set state back to the round starting phase 
And then once all the rounds have ran through, you can then maybe next or set state directly into the game ending state. So I hope you get the idea and I hope that makes sense. But essentially this just allows us to shuffle between states very easily. Now only the server should ever be allowed to control. Now obviously we only have one state, which means when we run next, we'll just exit state one and go back into state one again. So let me just start it up here and let me start it up on the client. And as you can see, both the client and the server has the log of entered state one. Now, if I on the server, press X, you can see we exited state one, we entered state one, and the same thing happened on the server. We exited and we entered. And this is just all controlled from the server. Now, you can also see in the state machine here, I've made a little debug setup in the inspector for us to make it easy to see what's our current state, what's our previous state, and what will our next state be if we hit next. And now I've also added these state controls on the server, which allows you to essentially go previous and next by just button clicks. So you can see how I can just change state by clicking them. And then obviously what your role on the network is. And you can see on the client, I've also made it so you can debug out these values easily. So you can easily understand how everything is moving around. So now let's move on to making a second state. So I'm just going to make the game object for already. I'm going to call it state two. And let's make also make a script and call that state two. Now in state two, let's keep it the exact same. So just a normal node. And actually, let's just go and copy the code directly from here. Let me also remove that reference. There we go. So now we can say we entered state two and we exited state two. So now we can easily see that we can move between two states. And then next, we'll move into the states with relevant data as well. So now, of course, let's go into state two, drag and drop state two onto there, and also add state two into our list here. So now if I go ahead and I start, and I have the client join, you can see we entered state one, the client also said entered state one. And if I press X, you can see now we exited state one and we entered state two. And you can see the client did the same thing. And one of the auto network parts of this is the fact that if I leave now, and I clear the console, and my client joins again, you can see he once again just comes straight into state two to make sure that we're aligned with the server. And this is also very, very important when it comes to dealing with the data, which we'll get into now. So now let me make state three and state three is going to be a little bit different. Oops, nice spelling. State three is going to be a little bit different because state three is going to take in some data. So let me make state three and let's make it into a state node with the generic like so. And it's just going to be of the type int for this sake. We can, of course, make this anything that's serializable. But in my case, I think it's easy with just an int. And let's go and copy essentially what we have from in here again. However, this is going to be a little bit different. So let's do this. We entered and we exited state three. However, now, mind you, we don't have any data here. And that's because there's a different enter override as well that we can use. So if I do enter, you can see we also have this enter that now holds the int type of data, which is our generic data. Now, why this is important, you can see we can just debug out, enter state three with data, which is because if this state is to be entered like this with next and no data is given, it'll enter into this one. So we can essentially use it as a safe fail safe. So we can say enter state three with no data. And I can just lock this out as an error, for example, because in this case, we want to expect the data to exist. So in state two now, we now need to go next or set state with some given data. And that's as easy as really as just plugging the data in here. And you can see now it's going to the next state with data. Now, just to show you that this is fully generic, I'm just going to make a public int and I'm just going to call it my data. And I'm just going to plop that in here. Whoa didn't get to copy it. There we go. I'm just going to plug that in here. So now when I hit X, we'll send my data to state three. And it should essentially be as easy as that. And now we also log out the data. So let me go back and let's add state three. <coughs> so I'm going to add state three in here and I'm going to add state three to the state machine here as well. And I'm going to save and let's join with both the server and client. So you can see now we're in state one, I'm going to press X. Now we're in state two and we're going to press X and now we're in state three with data zero. And if I just clear this out and let's go another round. So state one, state two, and now here in state two, let me change this data just on the server to 420, for example. And when I press X, you can see we entered state three with the data of 420. And you can see the client did the exact same thing, exited state two, entered state three with the data 420. And this is once again, where the automatic buffering comes in really handy. Because if I stop playing now, I clear my console, I start playing, you can see we automatically entered state three with the data of 420, which makes it very easy for you to automatically handle states even with custom data. So I really hope that you see the value in such a setup. And hopefully you find it useful. I at least know that I use it in a lot of games and it makes it very, very easy to do buffering, reconnecting, catching up and so on. And if you also see the video on the player IDs, 
and to see the documentation on the player IDs, you'll also see that we handle reconnects in multiple ways there as well. So this is very useful for keeping consistent with handling reconnects properly and making sure everything is correct if people's games now crash and they're reloaded or whatever might happen. So hopefully you find this helpful. Hope you'll leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.